Hey, brothers and sisters in the Lord, I just have a little message. Um, I hope everyone is doing well tonight, um, well, this morning. Um, I'm sorry for the late videos. I'll try to start recording earlier. Well, if I could just find the time, because I really like to spend the beginning of my days just getting rest and, you know, getting myself together work but I just wanted to share this with you guys just you know what's on my mind um I don't think many people are resting in what Christ did I don't think people realize that their sins have been forgiven all of the sins that they, you know, do even after salvation. Forgiven means that you're no longer required to pay what you owe for something. And what we owe for our sins is death. You can't offer God your works for salvation, y'all. You can't, you know, when God asked you or asks you, why should you go into heaven? You're not going to say, I did all these works. You're going to say, your son, his death, his burial, his resurrection, nothing. God is always with you. Even when you lay your bed in hell, he's always with you. You are his child. He's going to stand by you. And Satan will do every and anything. He will encourage you to do any and anything to make you think that God is not with you. You are forgiven. You are forgiven, man. Like, I don't care what you're thinking about doing. I don't care if you're going, you know, you're thinking about going to rob a bank. I want you to know that if you are a believer on the Lord Jesus Christ, you trust the death, burial, and resurrection, you have been forgiven of that crime you're about to commit. And I'm gonna, you know, and I say it boldly. Will you suffer consequences? Yes. Come on now, common sense will tell anyone that robbing a bank or doing anything so grievous with the Holy Spirit dwelling in you is not a wise decision. It's not wise. And, you know, that's one of the reasons why, you know, Paul is always, you know, he's always admonishing believers to stay away from those things because it ruins our testimony. It really does. But I'm not here to talk about sin. I just need people to understand the gospel. There is a separation right now. Okay? And that separation is, you know, God revealing to us who is really trusting in their works and who's trusting in the death, burial, and resurrection. And there are many people who say they trust in what Jesus did, but they really just trust in their works. And you're going to find it out more and more, you know, in these coming days. We are in the last hour. And you need to let go of yourself. Let go of yourself. 
let go of yourself let go of your works let go of your effort just let it go let it go grow in grace grow through the milk of the word that is what god wants you to do repentance of all this sin is is not even the antidote look we need a mind change we need to renew our minds daily it is of the mind you guys in order for you to make better decisions in your life your mind has to be transformed that's where this battle is this battle is in our mind You know, when I realized who I was in Christ and I began to grow in that knowledge, you know, and I reminded myself, like, I feel different about things, you know, way different than I did even at the beginning of my walk. And this is what happens when you grow, when you get to know more about who God is and his love for you. I'm here to tell you he loves you no matter what. Satan cannot make you do anything that is going to pluck you out of his hand. You have been forgiven. Don't listen to people who tell you that you know, somehow you're going to get out of his hand. Don't listen to them, okay? Chastisement waits for those who live in, you know, grievous disobedience to the Lord. Yes, chastisement waits for them because God deals with his house first, and he does chastise us, but his love never stops. And his chastisement is out of his love for us. Y'all, y'all need to get this. If you don't get it, you need to pray. Because as you grow throughout this walk, grace is going to be revealed to you more and more and more each day. More and more each day. You know, people are here redefining words, saying that faith is obedience. When faith is right there in Hebrews 11, I know I said Hebrews 10 at first, I'm sorry. Um, It's in Hebrews 11, the first verse in Hebrews 11. The substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. Where are works there? Where does it say works? But you just wanted to say works. You think God is sneaky? If he wanted to say works, that's what he would have said. But he didn't say that. So stop lying on him. Stop trying to twist his words up. And deceive people. Eternal life is a free gift. We are saved by grace through faith and not of ourselves. And I'm tired of these backloaders too. Them the worst. The backloaders. The people who say, oh, if you're really saved, you won't do this. If you're really saved, you won't do that. Shut up. Shut up. Because you know what? All sin is sin. Okay? It doesn't matter. Different sins can land you in different situations in life, yes. But if you're not saved by the blood, if you're not covered in the blood, they all going to lead you to one place, hell. Before a believer, if they commit certain sins, their life is going to be a living hell right here on earth. A lot of people get saved at a young age and their lives take really drastic turns and they end up making some crazy decisions. But you know what? They're still saved. And you know what? 
God can also use them to be a light to this world. So do not underestimate who God can use. Don't do it. Because he uses people who are foolish to confound the wise. You know? Jesus is coming soon, y'all. And then, you know... I don't know the day, I don't know the hour, but I know it's going to be soon. And not only that, you don't know when your last day going to be. So, it's better to get this now. God is in charge of your salvation. You are kept by the power of God. Do you really think that Anyone's power can triumph over the power of God. If you think so, why the hell would you ask Jesus to save you? Why would you do that? If you think that there is some power out there that triumphs over the power of God, the power of the Holy Spirit, the power of the blood, why would you trust Jesus? Why would you believe on Jesus? I mean, you don't trust Jesus if you think that there's more powerful, you know, there's a more powerful power out there. But why would you believe Jesus? Why be a Christian if you think that the power of the blood isn't the most powerful thing? Why wouldn't you want to be covered in the most precious blood, the most pure blood there is out there? Why wouldn't you want to get your sins washed away? Why wouldn't you want, you know, God to see you as he sees his son? Oh, you want to work for it. Good luck, because we all done failed. You cannot be justified by a law that you are already condemned by. All y'all who trying to keep the law to be saved, they are. it's, it's called... What y'all doing is dead works because y'all dead people. Y'all not alive in Christ. Y'all dead people. Y'all need to be made alive. And God is not going to make you born again so you can die again. No. You will not die again. If you have eternal life, there's no death for you. Your life goes on and on and on and on and on. No death. Sin has already been dealt with, so it cannot take you out of his hand. But it can do damage to your fellowship, to your testimony. You know, you could suffer loss of reward in eternity. But that's only because those rewards are based off of what your new man, what your, you know, what your new man is doing. Okay. If you're living according to the new man, that's when you're going to reap you know, rewards, okay? Because that new man is who's going to heaven, okay? Not this old dead flesh that so many people think is more powerful than the blood of Jesus. Y'all trust the dead flesh instead of a alive and moving God, Oh, if you sin, if you sin, if you sin. Look, if you're not saved, you need to stop focusing on yourself and trust in what Jesus did for you. Because all you do is sin. There's nothing on you but sin.
And, you know, a lot of people, they like to add qualifiers, too. Uh, you know, those these people are really sneaky. They say, oh, you have to feel sorry for your sins. Oh, you have to be willing to stop sinning. Oh, you have to make a commitment. You know, oh, you have to produce fruit. Nonsense. The only thing you have to do is trust the death, burial, and resurrection. And once you get people, you know, settled in the milk, full off the milk, then you can get them on the meat. But until then, they need to be strong in the milk. And I see a lot of people trying to feed meat to babes. And I'm just looking at y'all like, what are you doing? We are covered by the precious blood of Jesus Christ. We are loved by the most high God, king of all kings, the Alpha and the Omega, the creator of the universe. We're royalty, you guys. And is that going to make you play in the mud once you realize that? I don't think so. I don't think so. Okay. We don't deserve his grace. You know, we don't deserve his love. We don't. We don't deserve it. But we should be thankful that we have it because we need it. I'm telling you, we need it. We fail all the time. We fail ourselves. So what makes you think we ain't failing him? For all those who say they don't sin, if only, if only Pinocchio existed... You know what I'm saying? Like, if only, like, people had a nose like Pinocchio. But you know what? God ain't even going to do that because clearly these people just don't even believe the word of God. They just don't believe the word of God. They just think they sin on accident. Like, how you sin on accident? What do you call that? A accidental sin. What's that? Oh, I accidentally kissed that girl. I accidentally looked at her butt when she was walking. I accidentally said that curse word. Nonsense. Get real, people. Um... Think that's all I have. You know, the gospel is First Corinthians chapter fifteen, verses one through four. The death, burial, and resurrection. Christ died for our sins, was buried, and rose again on the third day for our justification. Okay? It's either all of what Christ did or nothing. It's either you let him save you or you just die, okay? Stop trying to, you know, you all little thieves and robbers trying to get in with your works. That is what, you know, the Bible says about y'all. Y'all are thieves and robbers. Y'all are also murderers. Y'all going the way of Cain. It has a million things to say about y'all people, and it ain't good. It's not good. Y'all working for y'all salvation, worried about some prostitutes and some pimps and all that stuff. And all them types of people. Those people going to heaven before you. At least they can get the, the plan of salvation. At least they get it. And they going to heaven if they, you know, believe it. Even some Muslims be laughing at some Christians. They be, 
Like, if Christ died for your sins, why are you still repenting of sin to be saved? What sense does that make? you already been forgiven, so what are you, you, you trying to... And the Bible don't even say repentance of sin gets you saved. So y'all just made that up. Y'all just added that in there. Or, you know, I'm sure it's in one of these corrupt Bible versions. Yeah, it is. But, you know, they just made that up because Scripture don't teach that. If you repent of your sins, you'll be saved. You know? Now, it does teach that if you repent of a certain sin, that, you know, you won't, you'll be spared from some sort of wrath. I mean, it has stories about that, or you'll get blessing or cursing. Yeah, but that's not your eternal life. It's not for your eternal life. So I just wanted y'all to hear this message and I hope everyone has a good night rest if y'all are not resting and I'll talk to you guys next time. Love you. Bye. God bless.